Thank you for joining me on the Endless Mountain Network, and my name is Derek. Thank you, Mr. YouTuber, the Weatherman 2012. A while back, you were saying about questioning everything. Since then, I have consciously, as much as possible, uh, tried to question everything in which that I read, everything in which that I watch on YouTube or Google documentaries. I question everything in which I have believed in the past. I question everything in which I hear. So that has helped me very, very well. And I'm questioning something here called universal time. I'll get to that in a second. And I'll tell you why. First of all, let's compare the Gregorian and Mayan calendar. The Gregorian calendar basically tracks the Earth's rotation around the sun, the sun's rotation, that type of stuff amongst our solar system, where the Mayan calendar seems very universal, meaning it would be used in every single part of the universe as far as my instincts are telling me right now of course i question that and i'm looking for information to question it on both sides so okay now let's talk about universal time i want to know more about the and like i say i question it so i'm trying to know more about this universal time that i know of which is based on the mayan calendar and it's and the stuff that i talk about in the mayan calendar math uh, youtube video and so I did a uh, Google search for universal time. I come up with Wikipedia and I read it and I quite frankly questioned it right off the bat and I know that Wikipedia is wrong because Wikipedia says the universal time is a time scale based on the rotation of the earth. Based on the rotation of the earth. So if this is true, that means universal time, which is the whole universe, would be based on the earth. Quite frankly, that is very primitive in my opinion. So apparently millions and millions of light years away in a far galaxy away from here, some know-it-all of the universe will be asked, well, what is universal time? And this know-it-all know is going to say, son, there is a galaxy millions of light years away called the Milky Way galaxy. And in this galaxy, there is billions of planets with, Earth, with life on it. And one of them has got a planet called Earth. That is where the universal time is located. And not only is it located on Earth, but they have something called Greenwich time, which means London, England area will be where universal time is. So now you can see how I think. I know that that Wikipedia entry is wrong. Thankfully, there is something that says edit this page. If you can uh, change it, I'm not gonna change it, but if you know what I'm talking about, please uh, put the real universal time as we know of as right now, because that is not universal time. So I did, dude, I did another Google search. I wanted to see how many uh, stars were in our galaxy. So I did a Google search, how many stars were in the galaxy? 100 billion was the answer. The next one was how many galaxies were in our universe? Again, 100 billion came up and they also said, of course, that that's of the known universe. Of course, there's going to be more. And from what we see, it's infinitive, which makes a lot of sense because the Mayan calendar that the time they're talking about is all about infinitive. So that makes a lot of sense to me. But let's just say hypothetically that there's 100 billion stars in the average galaxy and there is 100 galaxies in the universe. So 100 billion times 100 billion is quite frankly a massive number. And let's just say that one of every 100 million stars contain life. So we'll take 100 billion, multiply that by 100 billion, or divide that by 100 million. That answer gives us 100 trillion. So the chances of which that our planet would be the universal time when there are multiple trillions of planets that have life, quite frankly, is once again very primitive. So what is the formula for me based on the Mayan calendar? Well, first off, I question everything. This is a Mayan calendar book by Dr. Kalaman, the stuff in which Ian Lungold is talking about. And here is the formulas right here. The one for the cellular time is 13 times 20 to the power of seven. Oh, I question that big time. I wonder, well, why is 13 so relevant? Why is 20 so relevant and why is seven so relevant? And the 20 was the big one that my instinct was popping up. And what I thought was, well, it came to me two to the power of eight divided by 13 was 19.69. And that's what was feeling right for me at the time. I still question that to be right. But I mean, I question 20 and I question my answer, excuse me. So for me, universal this formula here, 2 to the power of 8 divided by 13 to the 2 to the power of 8 is 256. 256 divided by 13 is 19.69 with a bunch of decimals. This number to the power of 1 over infinity. 
that is universal time. I'm going to talk more about math on here. It may get a little confusing for a lot of you. Hopefully there's some who will understand it. So that is how I see it. Now, if we take the number that this book has, which is 13 times 20 to the power of 7, you'll get the answer of 16.4 billion. Yeah, 16.4 billion years, which is how they say how long the universe is or when the Big Bang started. Now, Mr. Stephen Hawking says that it was about 15 billion years ago that the Big Bang started. And quite frankly, I trust Mr. Hawking's what he says. He is quite frankly a huge genius, in my opinion. And when I do 2 to the power of 8 divided by 13 instead of 20, I come up with a number that is just so close to 15 billion years that it makes it my number more relevant with this book here. So, so I question this book. I still question my beliefs. I don't know what is true, but until I find out what is true, that formula will be true for me. So what I did on the spreadsheet was I took the number 256 divided by 13, and I put that number to the power of negative 99 times 13. Do you understand how small of a fraction that number is? That is a huge, huge, we're talking one over billions. That's how big or how small of a fraction that number really is. And what I did with that number is I took it by the rate of acceleration. Now, how do I know what the rate of acceleration is? Well, I didn't know. I, I was going for my meditation walk and boom, it just came to me. And it is this number here. The 256 number divided by 13 to the power of 1 over 13. That is the rate of acceleration. So I take that number into that and I keep on every time I compoundedly add that interest rate and the rate, of course, is 0.257654293383356834795827725. That's as far as my calculator will go on that number. That, to me, is the rate of acceleration, universal time. And I took that number and I increased it time and time again until I got to that point where this talks about the cellular cycle and I was seconds off. Let's just come up with it this way. When I did it on, uh, let me bring up my spreadsheet here. I came up with 14,928,619,309 years off. So based on my calculations, I am a total of over one fifth of a second off. That's how close I was, over a fifth of a second. I mean, starting with negative 99 on the uh, exponent. I mean, that is amazing, amazing. Now, if anyone wants to know about this spreadsheet, I will tell, I could give you information on how to make this spreadsheet yourself. If you are wondering about that, please send me a message because I understand this confuses a lot of people, as it should, because it's advanced math. But it's a math that I understand. There's a lot of math I don't understand, so I got to only presume that there's enough people on the planet that do understand this math. And this is the math that talks about these cycles of the Mayan calendar. So I'm going to explain more of this on a web page very soon, but uh, anyone who can help me expand on this information is so much appreciated. Please send me a message on here before a video response or a personal message. I would totally love that because we work. We are working together to find out all the answers because I don't know everything, you don't know everything, but I do believe, and I question it, but I do believe that all of us together know everything, which is why when we communicate to each other, we know more and more, in my opinion. So, to me, it is primitive to think that universal time, as Wikipedia says, is correct. I look more towards the Mayan calendar for the uh, correct time. And uh, thank you all for joining me on the Endless Mountain Network. Peace and life, peace and love for the life. Uh, and uh, feel the love, accept the love, and share the love. Have yourself a magnificent moment, everyone. Bye bye.